Over four years ago, I started to use Vim motions for the first time. And now, after three years of using NeoVim, I finally landed on the perfect NeoVim config that just feels amazing to use. So, I just wanted to dive in and show you my current NeoVim config and how everything works. So, if you go over here to my dot files directory, I'm basically just using get and I'm also using stove to set up all my dot files so we can move everything between machines and all of that. But let's actually dive on into my NeoVim config now. I've played around with quite a few package matches, but I settled on lazy. The reason for this is if you look over here, I'm able to split up a lot of my configurations. So if you go over here, Lua, Sky, Lazy, all the config for all these plugins are over here. These plugins don't have to be configured in a million different places, but let us let me give you the grand tour. So first up, we have the init.lua. This has nothing in it except what it does is it literally goes over here and requires this file. This file, not much still going on in here. So the init.lua, this is literally just loading up lazy, telling it to you know, load all my lazy plugins and if lazy is installed so you're opening up them in a new machine for the first time, it will basically just install lazy. And this loads our sets and key map. So let's take a look. So I won't be going over all of these as there's quite a lot in here. But if you want to, you can look in the description down below. I've added comments to for almost everything that's going on here. But let me go over some of the big ones I use. So one of my favorites is a script I stole where it's just control F and I can quickly search through all of my directories and quickly open it up in Tmax. It makes things super fast. For some other good ones, I've got this one, a uh, leader PV just quickly opens Explorer so I can quickly look files, create new files if I need to. This one's quite nice too, it keeps things centered. This is one of my favorites actually, because by default when you copy something, I'm doing right over there, it copies into a Vim buffer, but it doesn't copy into your local computer buffer. I mean, look over here. I mean, nothing's even in there right now. But if I do this, instead of pressing Y, if I press space Y, now that's copied into my... Let's look, I can show you if I open up a new terminal. That's copied over into my local actual computer buffer clipboard thingy. And a lot of the other stuff here, such as this, this is all just for making terminals. So if I want to, you know, use terminals inside of Vim or whatever, I can just do that real quickly. You know, these are some moving things. This is quite a nice one. This moves stuff up and down, but also keeps indentation, especially between tabs. This is a compiler script. I was learning things like lat latex, or have you, latex, have you pronounce it? Sometimes I have wrap mode on. I don't know why. So just in case I do, I will use GJ and GK to make sure to move between, like, the wrap lines and not... Let me give you an example, actually. If you go set wrapped, you go set wrap, and I go back to the correct file. I zoom in. So it will just let me move between these lines, even though they're technically different lines. That's all it does, basically. <laughs> all right, now to my sets. Once again, won't be going all of these. And some of these, I, I realistically don't need all of these in here. As I'm pretty sure some of these were default, but I need to look another time. Let me just go over some of the good ones quickly. So number one, my lead is set to space, as it should be. Number two, I like to have numbers and relative nine numbers. So I can quickly see up here, oh, that's 10 lines up, so 10K. Or I can see, oh, that's six lines down, so 6J. This allows me to quickly move around code at the speed of light. Over here, this just makes colors look good. This is just a bunch of undo file stuff. So I use another plugin over here, which we'll talk about in a minute, called undo tree. And um, you know, these are just some normal defaults that any sane person should have. This is quite nice. This is just, you know, when I start typing, it does, you know, it starts to highlight things. It's quite nice so you can see clearly what you're searching for. Sign column, uh, that's just like, there you go, as you can see over there, just that W, that's all it is. This is just so it will start to scroll eight lines before you're at the top or bottom, makes things nicer. This one over here, it actually did say true a second ago, I just changed it because I realized it was set to the wrong setting when I was playing around with my configs the other day. But what this does is basically just keeps buffers in memory. This isn't VS Code, and we, we don't need millions of gigabytes of RAM to keep a single, you know, file open. This is just the one you're searching, basically all it does is, so let's say I start searching for opt, You'll find every instance, including if there was a capital letter. But if I did capital O, it'd only search for capital opt instead. This just turns off any bell noises because why would you want that? This one's quite nice. This is just so when you start highlighting after you press enter, it should stop highlighting. Oh, is it just like is permanently there the whole time and it really annoys me? This just makes that our W look nice. Right, we can now move on to the exciting stuff. My plugins. So let's just kind of go in order over here. So colors. I mean, this file looks a lot more complicated than it is. I love this was stolen. But uh, what's going on up here is these are just all the colour schemes I like. This is made by TJ DeVries, who makes a lot of, you know, popular Neovim plugins. I'm sure if you've watched it, probably heard of him. He makes all of the, like, a lot of popular Neovim plugins. And here's what's going on here is I just have the settings for each of these plugins defined. Depending on what this colour scheme, what this is set to, will be what my colour scheme is set to, basically. If it's not screwed by the colour scheme, it will just set it. Otherwise, if it is, it adds all of these bunch of extra random things, which I stole, changed a few bits here and there to make it look nicer. 
And these are just some, you know, random highlight stuff going on. This is the color column. This is, you know, like the window separator over here, if you can see this thing. This is, you know, the board on a floating window, the sign column, remove the background of that, and just remove the background in general so you can see my nice, lovely background. We have this one, which is also quite nice. This allows me just to quickly, you know, rip a GB18J. Just basically quickly comment lines in and out. I mean, it's simple, but it's a really nice plugin to use and I use it all the time. And over here, we've got Copilot. As I've been trying out Copilot recently, I'm still not too sure if I'm gonna keep it or not, as it is 10 pounds a month, which is quite a lot. So I'm gonna have to continue playing around with it to see. In Git.lua, this is literally just um, Git Fugitive, so you can quickly do everything you need to do. And then this was stolen, I don't remember where from, but this was stolen, so that after I make a change, I could just do lead a P to push, so I don't have to type Git push. Harpoon, this is an amazing plugin written by the man himself. All this does is it literally allows you to quickly switch between files. So let me show you. So I'm going to press leader A, go into this file we just did, leader A, and then control H, control T. Really switch between these two files. And I could do control E to delete or move them around or add others. It's a great plugin which I use all the time to quickly navigate code. Local Dealer, this is just a local plugin which I was making. This is my Todoist.envim plugin, which I need to actually continue working on as I've not worked with this in ages, but the whole goal of this is basically allow you to interact with your to do with some of them. As there were some other plugins I found online to let you do it, but none of them seem to work. And mine works, but it's not as efficient as it should be. Then we've got lsp.lua, this is a big one. If you don't know, LSP is basically how you're able to get, you know, all of that autocomplete in languages you're using. I definitely can trim down what I've got in here because I've got quite a lot going on in here. I'm just using everything. So I've got, L I'm using LSP0 to basically run everything. Envim comp and Mason are basically my main big things. And then I've got a few other little things like this, which is really nice when you're on CSS. You can quickly convert pixels to rems or back or whatever. It's hooked straight into comp. It's super nice. I also have Copilot hooked into comp. I set up all my sources, you know, set up mapping, set up colors, all of that fun stuff. I also enable over here Lewis Snip, which we'll get into in a minute. This plugin over here allows me to interact with Obsidian from within any of them. I don't really use this too often, as things in the Obsidian app are just better because they work better in a GUI. But every so often I will use this and it's nice. And over here, this is Snippets. This is for Lewis Snip. I really want to go through and add more snippets, but just as an example, quickly, let's just open up a Go file and we can, you know, do F and then Control E. -E. Give it a name, give it args, a string, then we can return, I don't know, bull. We could. I do also have a few others in here, such as EE, -E, and then control E, that just simply types out if error does not equal nil. I also have SQL.lua, this is just a plugin from TPOP and a few other people just to let me interact with like SQLite or SQL or PostgreSQL or whatever from within any of them. This is my status line plugin I wrote myself. I'm supposed to be able to customize the stuff in here, but I haven't bothered to add that feature yet. So if you install this, you can't customize what's in here, but I quite like it. It shows why I want it as normal mode, insert mode. I was also going to add a thing to do the colors at some point. It shows how many errors there are on your file warnings and then just help in general the name of your file path you know icon or git branch you're on and your current line and column on the line this is my file for telescope i have quite a bit going on with telescope you don't know what telescope is it's basically a fuzzy finder but you can kind of make it fuzzy finder for your own things that makes sense let me give you an example so if i press ctrl p this will search all my files there in git so let's say i wanted to find i don't know zshrc there it is. I can do space pf and this finds files that aren't just in get, like it finds all the files. I also have space ps which allows me to quickly grab, so we can grab for the word vim. You can see over here, then you can do cool things such as control q now, control j, and it's all done a quick fix list now, so you can quickly move around. The space pp, this is just live grab too, this is quite nice too. Then I can send it to a quick fix list too if I want to. Telescope help, this is quite nice, this allows you to search for vim help. Tough. So let's say I want to look for something to do with LSP and I can quickly pull it up. It's just a nice quick way to search, so they've got me to go like help LSP. I've got this one which is quite nice, if you want a highlighted string, space ps, that will grab your highlighted string. I've also got this one which is quite nice, space vrc, this will just let me, it's vimrc, even if it's not just my vimrc, but this just allows me to quickly search or anything in my dot files so i could be anywhere i mean look, let's open up over here go over here and just space vrc and i can look for i don't know test.lua which i don't have but apparently i have this tree sitter this is quite a standard one most people have heard of um these days this basically just makes your colors look nicer near them you could do other things with it but i basically just use it to make my colors look nicer near them there's also undo tree this is quite nice if you go over here so let's go to a file which i've actually edited probably more often so lsp.lua 
I can go back the changes from 107 days ago in this file. It just does a bunch of like magic to save everything. So I can just go really far back in your changes. It's a super nice plugin to have. And the last plugin is zenmode.lua. This is just sometimes you want like a cleaner environment. The space ZZ, there you go. It just kind of gives you a cleaner environment. <laughs> now the last little bit just in this after folder. So after plugin, we have auto commands lua. These are just some auto commands I have to find. It's when you open up a terminal, we'll set the file type to term and that will come in handy in a minute. We create a group called sky for, you know, auto commands just we have this over here, which when you gank something, gives you that nice little highlight. This is quite a nice one. When you write, so that was white space, you write the file, it deletes the white space. I have to use this weird hack here because the way Lua works with strings. And then this over here, because I have these files with some shell scripts that like does bookmarks to me. This basically just does all of that whenever I write those files. And then last but not least, we just have these for certain files, certain, the way certain things work. So in C, I don't really write C often, but shift width is set to 2. And then inside of Leo, I have the shift width set, the format options, and the comment string all just changed a bit. And then when I open up a terminal, I want to turn off line numbers and turn off the scroll off. So yeah, that's my new config for 2024. I used to have a lot more complicated config. I was able to move like 800 lines of code, and there's still definitely random things in there which I can remove. I don't need it. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day.